Good afternoon, St. Mary's First School for the very last time uh, before we return to school next week. How exciting is that, that we won't have to do our assemblies through this remote method anymore. And this time next week, you'll be enjoying being with all your friends rather than sitting at a computer having to communicate that way, okay? Well, there's lots going on behind the scenes. We've got teachers cleaning your school and preparing your school as we speak. For mums and dads watching, this Thursday, we do have a lot of information coming out in letters regarding your return. On those letters, we do include starting times, class arrangements, club information, lunches, changes to the curriculum, anything you can imagine we've included in that information which is coming out on Thursday evening. So please look out for that newsletter. And boys and girls, you might want to, to read the newsletter with your parents because it's all about you and how we're going to stay safe together. The most important information I would ask parents again, we're not completely out of this pandemic yet, it's just please, please, please follow those rules uh, and stick to those guidelines that we are publishing in our newsletter. Please arrive at the right times, stay socially distanced and return safely to your home. And before we know, we won't have any restrictions of any type in our schools, okay? So thank you for that. Um, now then, it's the third week of Lent and I'm delighted that we've got Mr. Gib Mr. Simpson sorry, with some Lenten messages. Mr. Simpson. Good afternoon everyone and I hope you're having a great day. I just want to talk to you a little bit more about Lent today. And there are three pillars to Lent and one of them is about giving alms, charity work. And in the next few weeks as a school, we're going to be supporting a special needs school in Zambia. And this school has very limited life resources, like they have very little access to clean, fresh water. And what we would like you to do as a school is, we would like you to raise money by filling smarty tubs or any type of tub with spare coins, coppers, so we can help those who are less fortunate than we are. We all know in this pandemic how difficult it is to keep germs from spreading. But just imagine what it must be like to stop germs from spreading without access to clean, fresh water. Finally, we know that during Lent, we must try to become close to God by giving to others. And this would be a wonderful way to do that. But I also want to talk to you today about Lenten promises. In deciding our Lenten promises, we should decide generously. After all, before us is the great gift that Jesus gave us all. He gave his life for us all on the cross. Pope Francis said in his Ash Wednesday homily, Lent is also a privileged time for prayer. When Pope Francis spoke, he quoted Saint Augustine, who described fasting and almsgiving as the two wings of prayer, because they are signs of humility and charity. Prayer offers us all a very special opportunity this Lent to grow in our relationship with God and to deepen our commitment to a way of life rooted in our baptismal promises. In our busy and chaotic world, prayer provides us with an opportunity to reflect upon our behaviour, both good and bad choices. We should pray more deeply and be sorry for what we've done wrong and also what we fail to do, and to be generous to those in need. Take care, everyone. Now then, this week is World Book Day, and I'm absolutely delighted that we've got Miss Bear telling us about all the fantastic activities that's going on behind the scenes uh, at St. Mary's First School. Miss Baird, would you like to tell us more? So on Thursday, boys and girls, we've got World Book Day. It's very exciting, so you can dress up as your favourite character from a story, whether you're at home or at school. If you are at home, make sure you send in some pictures for us to see what you've been up to. You've also had a book cover to design. We've asked if you can stick these in your front window. So if on Thursday you'd like to go on a little bit of a book trail, you can see if you can spot any book covers in the windows of different houses. We've also got a book token competition which you can win money in for yourself, for your school and for your teacher. So you have to design your favourite book token and send it in to the World Book Day website and you can enter into the competition. So good luck if you'd like to enter into that. And it's lovely to see all these lovely designs. This is from 
Alfie in year one and he's designed a Jur Jurassic World book token. So boys and girls, as promised, Mrs Stansfield did say that we were going to have a number of staff doing the Mask Reader Challenge, reading a short extract from a famous book. Now then, here are a few coming up now. Let's see if you can work out which teacher is behind the mask. Aha, my hearties. My favourite book is The Night Pirate <laughs> by Peter Harris and Deborah Allwright. <laughs> if you can't guess who I am, you'll be walking the plank. Here, me and my two brothers are on the search for a brand new house, but we've got to pick materials which will be the strongest. Hmm, I wonder which ones they will be, so stay tuned. But there's an issue because we might get into trouble with a big bad wolf. So make sure that you stay tuned and see which pig gets the best house. This story because the troll is scary and the goats have a lovely happy ending. Okay, so this is uh, one of my favourite books from, uh, from when I was little. It's called The Snail and the Whale. And I really liked it because it rhymes, it had lots of really nice rhymes. Like, this is the sea, so wild and free. That carried the whale and the snail on his tail, so I like the rhymes. It's got beautiful pictures in it. There's a stormy sea and a sunny sea. Some fantastic illustrations. Um, but also, it's a story about a snail saving a whale. Um, and to me, that means it shows that little tiny creatures can help big, powerful, strong creatures. And it's not always the big, strong people. Um, that can help others, tiny little people like me, I'm a little person, can help people as well and you can as, as children. For many weeks now we've been talking about our own, the importance of our own mental health and, and our well-being so this week we just thought, just thought we'd feature a couple of fantastic activities that you can do to develop your and improve your own resilience. Mr Thompson can you tell us about the resilience boat please? Being at home has been a really challenging time for some of you. Some of you might have found it really exciting um, and some of you might have found it really difficult. These are going to be some of the feelings that we're going to be talking about um, over the next few weeks at school because it's really important to discuss exactly how we're feeling. On this board here is just one of the types of activities that we're going to be looking at. It's called the Resilient Boat. Okay, so resilience means the ability to be able to bounce back after finding something particularly hard. Okay, so we can see the different parts of the boat here and they're gonna represent our different feelings. We know it's really important to talk to our friends, to talk to our families, people that we trust in school, our teachers and any other staff in school. And so to talk about our feelings will make us feel much better about ourselves. So this is just one of the examples that you're going to start seeing over the next few Okay, boys and girls, um, it's, it's always very difficult to pick stars of the week. I can't wait to physically give you your certificates next week in school. But here's this week's stars of the week. So it's time for our stars of the week this week. And it's our last week of home learning. So it's, we're all so excited to have you back in school on Monday. So in my class, my star this week is Parker. Well done, Parker. And it's for fantastic enthusiasm with our virtual PE lessons on a Monday morning. Well done, Parker. And in Miss Kane's class, we have Grace. And it's for fantastic effort and enthusiasm in her home learning. Well done, Grace. And in Mrs Oakes' class, she's got quite a lot of people. We've got Charlotte, Max, Amelia, Jasper, Eli, Nathan and Cole. And again, that is for just fantastic enthusiasm throughout the whole of home learning. And in Mr Thompson's class, we've got Seamus. And that's for an informative and persuasive Harry Potter book review. I think Mr Thompson's got it here to show you. Got Seamus' book review here. As you can see, it's loads of colours. He's designed his own book cover, given a brief summary of what the plot is about. Just loads of nice information there. We've got a four and a half star rating. I think I'll be reading, giving that one a read myself after reading that review. Great job. And in Mrs. Stansfield's class, we have Leighton, and it's for an amazing effort in all of his learning, you superstar. So well done, boys and girls. 
Okay, boys and girls, it's week six of our Bake Off. I'm absolutely delighted with the entries that have come in this week for our cupcake challenge set last week by Mr. Bell, our catering manager. Okay, so here, if you have a close look at our board, you can see some of the marvelous entries that have come in. All sorts of shapes and sizes, beautiful decor, beautiful color. I love the marshmallows on this one. The, the types of characters I've got here, even the little piglets over here. We've got one here that's celebrating World Book Day, okay, which I absolutely love. But my favorite this week, it's my choice. Um, it's my turn to pick. I haven't chosen one yet. The 10 pound Amazon voucher is going to Isaac and Ollie for what looks like um, rainbow cupcakes, which celebrate the NHS uh, Rainbow of Hope which we all um, support together. So congratulations, the Amazon voucher is coming on your way now and well done to everybody who took part. Oh, it's birthday time again, that exciting time of the year for so many children and we're delighted again for the very last time to have Mr. Rosier sing happy birthday to the following children. Mr. Rosier. Hello St. Mary's. This will be the last time that I get to do your birthdays with you because you'll be back in school next week. I hope that goes really well for you and you have a lovely time with all your friends and you'll be able to sing happy birthday with each other when you're down there. So, I'll put the hat on, sadly, for the last time, and we'll all sing along a happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Okay, boys and girls, that's all we've got time for this afternoon. This time next week, I can't wait to see you all back at St. Mary's and we'll all be together uh, where we can actually have assemblies live and you can ask your questions and we can celebrate so many things together. So not long now, it's exciting times for everybody. Stay safe and God bless.